Cleveland, Ohio, the land, the Big Apple, the city of angels, the Windy City, the Emerald City, the city of the sun. Yeah, none of that applied to Cleveland, but feel every piece. 1935, the first body was discovered. The torso murders. God damn They never found the murder. Oh my God, you never give yourself enough credit, what honey. What are you talking about? It, we have a lot. We have a lot here. It's, oh, look got, at this, look folks. at this. We, we have envelopes. so much. And we look at this paperwork. board. I mean, we, we just got pictures and paperwork. That's not enough. But, I mean, it could be something. You might you might be onto something here. Right, well, what do we got? What do we know? Okay, so what we know is that there was about 12, 12 victims, mm -hmm. possibly 13. We're not even sure. Okay. And only two of them were identified. We have Edward Andrassi here. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we have Margaret Polilo. I, you know. Polilo. Oh, I'm sorry. Polilo. It, it was a lot of L's. It was a lot of I's. A little O. Okay. Now, Andrassi. He was the first one found. And they found him the same day as a John Doe, but they believe that John Doe actually died earlier than him. He was the first one. But he one was the first one they found. Okay. The Palillo lady, uh -huh. she was around maybe the third or fourth discovery. Uh -huh. And you know, they, they recovered the head. Everybody was topless. Now, I don't mean strip club topless, I mean no head. But no wasn't head. she a bartender that also was a, a working lady? She's a little Is working right? girl. So she was mm -hmm. out here. She was, she was out, out here. here getting it out yeah, she I lit. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know why she's doing this, but that's what I, I picture. I don't know. I feel like she was doing a little Serving bit of this, but I feel like that's the roaring 20s on the wrong yeah. era. It's funny, dude. The women that were, you know, working the streets back then, they weren't really that cute. Either way, she was out here hustling. She did what she had to do to make a living in Kingsbury Run. A very run down part of town. Mm -hmm. Very sketchy. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Prostitutions out there. Though it's gritty out there. That's true. And a lot of these victims, they say, were just like, you know, they were just, you know, drifters out here. But she, she was out here working. I'm pretty sure people in the community knew her. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's funny, like, when they when they show old pictures of, like, you know, prostitutes. Right. They're not really that cute. They're not all that cute. I that mean, no disrespect, but, I mean, you know. she, she, probably, she probably had a good soul. I mean, yeah. Are you really looking for a soul when you just need to, just to get a quick one off? You know what I just realized? What's that? They were able to identify her body, her torso, because so many people saw her naked. Is that what it is? It had to be. I know those titties from anywhere. Yeah. That's Margaret. That's how I was like, yo, that's, that's Palillo. Uh-huh. I was that's, just touching, though. That makes so much sense. And then you become a suspect right then and there. Oh, my God. Anybody could be a suspect. That's true. Because these, these, these women, the, the prostitute, they out here on the front line. That's true. You know how many people they see? Oh, my exactly. God. Especially Strange back men, then. they hopping in the, you know, well, they wasn't hopping in the vehicles then, but they go into these dark alleys and right. run down bed bug ridden rooms. Right. That's You know, bed bugs. In Kingsbury Run, there right. was bed bugs all up and through there. That's very in Cleveland. True. It was bed bug, bone thugs, and harmony out here. Oh, God. Bone bugs and harmony. Oh, that's good. Bed bugs and harmony. That's really good. Man. So what else we know? Okay, so we do know who was working the case. Okay, who we was have that? Detective Peter Marylow. Okay. Which in this picture, I know he looks like a hobo, and you're yeah. probably thinking, what is that's he doing? The look. He's that's not undercover, right? He was, you know, he was out there, See? and he was went undercover in hopes to be attacked. Oh wow. This man is crazy. That's bold. This man is insane. Cause I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I got the guts to go in the cover. Plus, I wear this every day. That's true. They gonna know I'm a cop. Right. You know, I'm not blending true. in with this outfit. You mm -hmm. kidding me? That's but look at look at the hobo. Look, he got he had the stick with the bag tied on the end. I thought that was just for cartoons. Right. What do you think is in there? Nothing. Oh. You can't fit your belongings in that. That's a trash bag. Mm -hmm. All you got in there is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's actually a bandana. It's not even a trash bag. Oh, even even worse. I know. He's got a sandwich in there. Possibly. But what if the kill? What if that's all it took for the killer to really be fooled? What if he was just hungry? Oh my God! What if? He's like, oh, he got the stick in the sandwich. bandana. My next victim. That's. He funny. looks like an undercover cop. He does. He, his outfit's a little bit, uh, you know, his pants look pressed. He's trying too hard. He's, his uh, jacket is very nice. Mm -hmm. 
The only thing that looks a little dusty is his shirt and his hands. He's been eating. He's a little chubby, which a means he's been eating good meals out here. It's you really true. out here on these streets, you're going to be kind of thin, kind of free. That's true, especially back in those days. Yeah. People well, were not eating. Unless you were a hefty woman like uh, Palillo. She was eating. She didn't miss a meal. She did not miss the meal. She was out here getting it in. Yeah. On, on all sides. She was probably also the town chef. She was doing everything else. She might as well be, huh? Bartender, she's probably drinking beer. You know what that does to the <sighs> gut. Yeah, right. We have Ellie and Ness. He was, in, he was in the movie there with, uh, with uh, the, the Kevin Costner and Al Capone. He was the guy. This was the guy. And so, that's so un unsolved mysteries. Mm -hmm. The guy that hosted that show, uh -huh. his name was Robert Stack. He hosted the show. He played Elliot Ness in the Untouchable TV series. Did he? Yeah. He used to come out of the smoke field alley and host Unsolved Mysteries. Real creepy like. I remember that. And he'd be like, in the city. I do remember of that. that was him. So, you do bring up a good point. Mm -hmm. Al Capone. Al Capone. This man was on the case. Oh, he, was over, he was over the cops and the fire department. He was doing his thing. Okay. All right. So... He was on the case and he was, you know, he was like, all right, this place is a little run down, a lot of hobos over here, so it has to be one of them. Right? Okay. Um, I don't think he's really good at his job because he couldn't figure out who it was. So you know what he does? Mm. He burns down the whole thing. Oh, he just burned that. Burned King it all Bird down. Ring? I mean, wasn't that? Because he was like, I don't know who it is, just burn it all down. So that's what we have here. <laughs> so he just he gave up on the whole community. And he was just like, I don't I'm not really sure. I mean, he had a suspect here and there, uh, which we have here. Um, we have Frank Dolezal. This okay. was the first person they brought in. Oh. Because he was actually accused of killing Margaret. Oh, is that right? They know each other. They know each other? They know each other. Something like that. I don't know. Maybe he slept with her. Maybe he now ate some of her Now we know food. each other. Right. So, you know, he was brought in. Okay. But I don't think he did it because if you look really close on this, um, he's got chubby fingers. I don't think you could really make... Precise, Incision. yeah, you know what I mean? Precise you gotta cut. have surgeon hands. I feel like you need a little, like, piano hands the and surgeon hands. Fingers. A little skinnier. Yeah. So I don't think it was him. But don't don't sleep on chubby fingers. Like look, think about Elton John. He's the oh, wheels on the piano. Chubby fingers. I never thought of that. Yeah. Okay. It's all about a steady hand, though. It is about a steady hand, and if you look cut, here, it's a little blurry, so it's not it, too steady. It looks fidgety in the in the. In he the looks picture. like a little fidgety individual. Yeah. So it can't be him. So he was the first person arrested. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, and then once they realized that, you know, it, it, was, it couldn't have been him. He was too fidgety. Mm -hmm. um, that's when he, you know, was real frustrated. And, uh, and my timelines might be a little off. Right. But um, that's when he did this. And then after he did that, the, the, the murder stopped a little so bit. So he burned down the whole section. It was just like, I can't find who the killer is. Burn it off. He did. He did. Mm -hmm. um, and then the killer was like, I, I got nowhere to work now. It's true. And it's the killing stopped. Mm-hmm. But they never found, they never found the killer. They never did. Who do you think did? What you got? Honestly, here we have a little doctor. Of course. So this doctor was accused. Um, oh, Lord, what was his name? Sweeney Todd. Um, Sweeney Todd. Oh, God, what was your name, honey? Um, I have it written down on my notes. Sweeney I've written, Todd? Francis E. Sweeney, Dr. Francis oh, E. Sweeney. Snap. I knew it was one of them. So Dr. Francis Sweeney here was a suspect. Mm -hmm. So and he was a doctor in the military who specialized in amputations. Exactly. So that's why he knew what the hell he was doing. So from what I heard is that an individual went to the doctor and he was drugged and he was, you know, he was like, he was a little doozy. And there was no reason for him to be drugged because he was going for like a regular checkup. Mm -hmm. and now you gotta do is check, your, check under your tongue, check your pulse. Boom, bada bing, bada boom, you leave. That's right. it. But he just he put him under or something like that. It was something like that. So the individual went to the um to the cops and was like, yo, this doctor drugged me when there was really no need for it. Yeah. And he's on the corner of Broadway and somewhere else. I forgot. But the doctors went to the corner of Broadway uh -huh. and they didn't find a doctor's office. Oh, is that right? So they were like, You must have been really drugged, because there's no doctor's office over here. You must be tripping. But the truth is, is that the doctor's office was very low key. So unless you know what you're looking for, you're not gonna see it. It's not like a big old Dr. Edward, right. or a Dr. Francis E. Sweeney. Right. It doesn't say that over there. So you know what I mean? So, but if you ask me, I think it was him. I think it was a doctor as well. That doesn't sound too far-fetched, because look, look, look at the box. Uh -huh. 
be cutting pieces off, torsos, half torsos being found, thighs, legs, hips, mm -hmm. good incisions, everybody's beheaded. That's true. Everybody's beheaded. Hands are cut off, everything. Mm -hmm. Nipples. All the men were castrated. So he's just taking off the penises, everything. Cutting it all off. I know. And what's the point? Honestly. What's the point? I mean, maybe he's into that maybe he saved some of them. And some of these people were dismembered while they were still alive. That's, that's very unfortunate. I'm sorry, cousin. While they were still alive, meaning. They were probably under some drugs of some sort. Oh my God. And then he just making the cut. And who has access to the drugs? No, this is why the you're the detective. This is why you're the detective because I didn't even think of that. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know what it is about crazy people. He's still alive. Even though this was in the 30s, clearly he should be dead. But if killers never get caught, they never die on their own. What are you telling me right now? I'm saying he's still out here. If they never find the killer, I don't care how long it's been. Okay. He's still out there. Oh, and I need to bust his ass. Pause. Oh my God, you might bust him with your own penis. You never know. So if I end, if you end up finding me, mm -hmm. then my package is gone. Oh God, please don't. I don't want to think about it. And I'm out here with the top off like a convertible. Oh my God. You know, it could have been Dr. Sweeney. Oh my God! Don't even, don't even go. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying he's never been caught. Oh my God! Because if they, if they didn't bust him, they let him go. Or if they did bust him, but it's not him, the killer's still out there, from the 30s. Oh my God! Killers never die. Yeah. They live on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pure evil, just living off pure evil. People always ask the killers, like, why, why do you look so young? What are you doing? <laughs> Murder. It's good for the skin. Is it? I don't know. Of course. You think it could help? Well, then, first of all, don't get, any, don't get any bright ideas. I would hate for murder to really be good for the skin because women out here would just oh be God, killing people left and right. Just, everyone. just for Instagram likes. Of course. Are you kidding me? These oh. bags under my eyes? Lord. I'd kill you in a second if I could get rid of them. Damn it. I need answers. Mm. All, right. All right. So you know what we got to do. We're going to Cleveland. Let's get the hell out of here. Pack your bags. Put on bone thugs and all.